Hi, welcome to the Op Art Illusion project. Um, so this one we're going to be doing in Paint 3D if you're doing it digitally. Um, remember, you are also welcome to do this on paper using pencil. Um, marker would be a good one to use for this or any other color that you have at home. Um, so first to find Paint 3D, if you're not sure where to find it, um, it will be installed on your computer already. Um, if you go to the bottom search bar here, type here to search, um, type in Paint 3D. We do want the Paint 3D, not the regular paint, okay? So um, you press New, and that will open a file for you. Um, so one thing I will tell you, um, if you go up here to Canvas, um, it, you can adjust the size of your canvas. So I think I want something a little bit more square for this project. It doesn't have to be perfectly square, but there we go. Um, now I'm going to go to 2D shapes. So for the majority of the project, you're going to be using the 2D shapes. Um, not all of these shapes will work for this project, but a lot of them will, and you can, you know, get creative about which ones you use. Um, I might go for the diamond today. So, um, so I'm going to select my diamond, and now I'm going to drag this diamond. I'm going to, I'm going to start by make, make, making it touch all four sides. So now, once I do that, before I click away from it, um, I'm going to come over here and switch it from a line to a fill. Um, so I'm going to change the line type to none, and that will change it to a fill. And now if I click on this colored square, I can choose my color. Um, so these top three rows of colors are pre-selected colors. And then this bottom row is colors that you can make yourself. Um, so this might be empty for you, in which case you can just click on it. Um, I already have colors here, so I have to double click to open up my color chooser. Um, so for this project, we're using complementary colors. Um, I'd like you to start by choosing one color that you really like, and then we'll find it's complementary. Um, so I might go for kind of a robin's egg blue. That's pretty. Um, so this is between blue and green. So the complementary of blue is orange and the complementary of green is red. So my opposite of that is going to be a red orange. Um, so now I'm going to click on this stamp button. That makes an exact copy of the shape I just made. Now I'm going to go to my fill again, click on another color, and now I'm going to find that red orange. So I want to make it the same intensity, right? So if you do a pastel, you want to keep both of them a pastel. If you do a bright, you want to keep them both bright. Mine was like slightly off of bright, the brightest. All right. So now I'm going to reduce this. And my first few are going to be much wider. And as you go back in space, they'll get smaller. Um, so I am, that looks pretty even to me. Um, so I'm going to click the stamp button again. I'm going to go over here and switch it back to my blue. And I'm going to reduce my diamond size again. And this time, it's going to be smaller, but not quite as much smaller as it was last time. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm going to stamp it again. Again, switch my color. And adjust. Ooh. Do that. Um, adjust it so it's smaller, but not as much smaller as the last ring. Okay. 
Okay, again, I'm going to stamp it, switch. So I'm going to keep doing this until I can't anymore. Um, so this is the basic technique I'm using to go back in space. I'm going to, for the for the sake of um, making this quick, I am going to bring you to another um, project that I've already completed. Take you to this one. All right, so here I have one that I've finished. And as you can see, I, um, I kept going until it got very, very small. And the way that I did it in the very end was I, so I took my, my two fingers, I put them on the screen, and then I spread them apart. That zooms in. So you can get that really close detail and adjust, make those fine adjustments. Um, I did also, um, to get those outside rings, whoops, to get these outside rings, um, I used my, so for this one I was using the Pentagon, and what I did was instead of using that fill, right, I switched it over to a line, and I can adjust the thickness, and that way I was able to... Um, Um, to get those outside outer rings, so it goes all the way to the edge of the page. Um, so the very last thing, after you've done all of these layers and completely covered your page with this optical illusion, um, you can add some objects. So if you go to 3D Library, um, you have all of these kind of categories of different things you could add. Um, I'm going to check out the dinosaurs. So let's add a stegosaurus. So I click on it, takes a moment to load. All right, now it's in my project, and I there are five, four different ways that I can rotate this object. Right, so I can rotate it that way. I can rotate it this way. And now I'm going to make them smaller. And I want to put him in my illusion as if he's inside this kind of hallway. And you're going to add at least two um, Um, two or more because I want you to adjust the size um, for the depth of this illusion, right? So things that are close to you are much bigger and things that are further away are much smaller. So I'm going to put my woolly mammoth way down here. Oops. That stegosaurus is in the way. Okay. 
So you might have to go back and forth and play with these a little bit to adjust your sizing and spacing. Essentially, you want your, your objects um, to enhance that illusion of going deep down into this um, kind of crazy spinning hallway. Um, and there it is. Um, to save, you're going to go to Menu, Save, Image. Okay. Make sure you know where you save it. I'm going to call this Dinosaur Op Art. Save it. And now this is a file in your computer that you can easily add to your website um, or send to me an email, whatever you need to do with it. Um, it's right here. All right, I hope you have fun with it. Thanks.